a very good afternoon to all welcome to our special lecture that from surakshit bharat champion present cyber awareness talk on psychological implications of social media we are about to start our session meanwhile i request all the participants to kindly mute yourselves we believe the session to start on time and now it's right time to start our session we are extremely thankful and honored to welcome our esteemed speaker rirali bhatia ma'am thank you so much ma'am for accepting our invitation and embracing the knowledge of all the participants with your vast experience and and your words with this we have our host ruchika divedi with us now i request ruchika to kindly give a brief introduction about our team speaker nirali bhatia ma'am thank you ma'am good afternoon i take this opportunity to welcome nirali bhatia ma'am on this uh, cyber awareness talk on psychological implications of social media nirali bhatia is a psychologist certified cognitive behavioral therapist and internet addiction therapist specializing in the study of cyber psychology she is a tedx speaker corporate trainer for cost and the director of v4 web technologies private limited with two decades of experience in web technology and psychology of cyberspace she has been quoted in various articles in leading newspapers and news channels she has been invited as a guest speaker and panelist by various prestigious organizations such as un women unicef national commission for women nascom and has also been on panel of debate on times mirror now cnbc g news as well as in numerous cyber security conferences she was appointed as a psychologist and digital behavioral analyst for the television show mtv troll police which was aired on mtv she is also founder of anti cyber bullying organization cyber anti bullying cyber organization cyber ba which acronyms for cyber bullying awareness action and prevents she actively conducts workshops and training programs for adults children's parents teachers and organization and also has counseled and helped many individuals who have been victims of cyber crimes online psychological damages and addiction she is a certified usability analyst from human factor international usa and has also been served as a vice chairman of women safety of india premier and non profit organization fsai that is fire safety association of india which is committed to enhance the safety and security of women in india very recently she has been awarded as india's top women influencer in cyber security um, please welcome on this session ma'am over thank to you ma'am thank you so much good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you so much for joining us on a sunday afternoon which is a day all of us get to relax but i'm very happy to see so many enthusiastic students and which is what encourages us to do more of awareness work so without wasting time i'll quickly uh, you know put up my presentation so that we can have more time to answer to your questions okay so as i share my screen i may not be able to see any of you all or the things so at any point if you are not able to hear me or you are not able to see my screen please unmute yourself and go ahead and let me know so once again uh, welcome everyone as the topic says psychological implications of social media before i begin and share what i have to uh, with you all what is my understanding of uh, you know uh, in terms of explaining to you what entitles when we enter social media how about getting to know from you all that what do you expect from today's session so let's give ourselves 30 seconds quickly put into the chat box whatever comes to your mind or what are your expectations when you read about this topic let's start now it would be wonderful to have an interactive because you know post uh, thanks to the covid scenario it's really been difficult getting in in the in person environments we're all doing it via the screen and i would hence request that don't make me feel i'm talking to plain screens so can any one of you all put into the chat box that what do you expect what do you think uh are the social or the psychological impact of social media 
30 seconds is what we give ourselves. And thank you so much for people who have already shared last five seconds. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got a, I've got a few comments over here, but one of them is really, really very interesting, and that's Sham Drool. Influence of social media in our decision making process, either small or big. This is a very, very significant point, and very important for us to understand how and at what level are we getting influenced, or how and at uh, how it is actually impacting, you know, like he's very correctly pointed out, every single decision. And that's exactly what cyber psychologists study. That's what we study. The impact of internet technology, very specifically on our behavior and our uh, decision-making abilities. So thank you so much for putting, of course, the rest of the points are equally significant and I am going to try and cover as many as possible. So moving forward, uh, thank you so much. I've already been introduced, so I don't need to go through this again. So let's begin. I believe that each one of us is waking to a screen that looks like this and going to bed to a screen that looks like this. If there is anyone who really does not have a screen looking like this with them next to them at any point of time, then please come ahead and say, and we would be really happy to know that there is even now someone who does not have a screen like this. Why very specifically are we talking about social media today is, a lot of research in these past, you know, four or five years, but very specifically of last two years shows that each one of us actually spends more than 60% of our time in cyberspace on social media. Social media is not just Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any space which is allowing you to interact with different people. So be it your chat, uh, apps like WhatsApp, Telegram, etc. Wherever uh, you're using technology to talk, to interact with another person is what accounts as a social space. So chat platforms, gaming chat rooms, uh, dating chat rooms, etc, etc. All of these become a social space. Even Pinterest, where you can talk to people, where you can form groups, share interests, so is YouTube. And hence the, the entire domain of social media is very vast. And that is the primary reason for us to understand that what are we spending 60% of our time into? So let's look at a very beautifully created video which explains to us what exactly is the reality of this platform.
This video actually summarizes that what goes behind what we see on the social media spaces and how many of us are knowingly or unknowingly believing to live a lie. That's what it is pushing us towards. I'm not saying that social media is completely bad or you know uh, it's not good for us, no. A platform or a medium can never be on itself bad or good. It's the use, it's the purpose for what we use it is what decides that how good is it for us or how bad is it for us. So let's understand what are the main stressors of this platform, which is what is making it uh, you know, extremely difficult for many people. Uh, at Cyberbob, which is my anti-cyberbullying organization, over, I, I believe just in the lockdown period of this one and a half to two years, we've got more than 8,000 complainants writing to us. These are the victims who have fallen prey to online harassment and cyberbullying. 80% of this happens on social media platforms. 20% are where it could be a job fraud or it could be a loan app uh, scam or you know those different things, but 80%. And actually, more than 85% of the victims who write to us fall in the age group of 13 to 25. So this is the age group who is spending a lot of time on these platforms. Also, the positive thing that I see is at least they are seeking help, which is what really drives us to spread more and more awareness because we may not be able to stop where you're falling prey to until we have prepared and we have made you aware. And why is it so? What is it about this entire platform which is making you either stress out, uh, drop your guards, fall prey to various types of crimes? And that's what we are going to look at. So these are the main stressors. I'm going to explain each one of this in, uh, you know, separately and at length for you to understand that what you're seeing and what you're going through is so different. First important stressor is the highlight reel. Why highlight reel? Because what we put up online or what we see on a people's timeline is only and only the best moments of their lives. None of us are going to put up anything which is like... Uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe, you know, while doing this entire uh, presentation, I have a lost connection or I had a video which was not playing properly. Am I going to put up those screens? No. What's going to go is only the good looking picture, the good looking screenshot. That's what makes it only the best moments. But life is never only about best moments. It's always a flow. It's of ups and downs. However, what we end up doing is looking at someone's life's highlight reel. We gauge that where are we standing? We compare ourselves to that and constantly have this pressure of having that perfect moment to share online. I've just shared some of you know a, a reel from my own Facebook page timeline. Is my life only about media? Is my life only about uh, talks that I give? There's so much more. This is only one aspect. But what people see from over here that, oh my God, she's so uh, buzzing, you know, all over this thing, profile pictures ago, this is good. That's how people are comparing and it puts pressure, not only on themselves, but also on the person who's presenting. Because now that you've set an image, a virtual image of yourself to a certain standard with all the filters and whatever glamorization that you got to do, you have to constantly live up to it, which is what adds the stress. As we saw in the video, for that one but perfect picture, that boy has changed 11 shirts. Has he put that picture or has he put that effort that has gone in putting up that one particular photograph? The desk that we saw, what was the reality and what actually goes online? So what we fail to see is the actual real. We only and only see a highlight reel, but it's since it is about common people, 
you tend to believe see highlight reel we have been seeing right from the time we are born that's all the you know movies are all about they show the best and the idealistic and the most fantasy like stories but we are aware and we are prepared to know that this is not real 100% though many of us idealize many of us get inspired that's one aspect but since they are all celebrities and they have been portrayed in a way that okay uh, you know they have to act we fail to understand that so is it on social media today that we have to act it is again a highlight reel it's not the real picture each one of us just because it is of you me and anyone who goes on social media does not take away the fact that we are only seeing a lopsided view so that's one stressor of the social media let's move on to the next one which is the social currency uh i am not sure how many of you all are well versed this is the, with this term called social currency social currency is the currency that we spend on the social spaces in forms of our likes our comments our shares forwards content creation content endorsement this is all that accounts to your social currency there is an unsaid pressure of you know uh being part of spending your currency so for example if your professor puts up a post there is an inherent and unsaid pressure for you to actually like it whether you agree with it whether you don't agree with it etc etc same is with the family groups with your friends with your peers the 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 important aspect over here is that if you spend your social currency without being aware without totally understanding the responsibility with that comes with it is where you are actually supporting fake news fake information and it can lead to incidents such as lynching we all have heard about lynching you know where uh, a false news or a false information becomes so so significant due to the x number of uh, likes and endorsements that it has got not only that also what has happened with the social currency is that it has given people an and and of and an instant gratification expectation so very common example uh and this is how social media actually functions if you remember there was this gentleman whose video who danced like govinda you know uh very similar he danced on one of the songs and overnight his video received x number of views and likes and he became a sensation this is what social media is doing it is it is kind of inculcating these kind of aspirations every single youth today aspires that mera content be itna viral ho jaye that overnight i am a celebrity on social space without understanding that this fame is very short lived how does one care about you know what has happened everything on social media there is so much information that nothing stays over here for ever or for a very long time real success comes with persistent effort not like this not that i'm trying to discourage you that no you should not aspire but create meaningful content which is going to be relevant after some time as well not that entertainment is a bad content but if you're constantly going to put attention only to that just to get that immediate attention you know and that's how the entire roasting culture has grown so big sense of humor comedy entertainment is extremely creative channel but when people add uh you know or 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 try to become popular or make others laugh is by demeaning someone else that's not what really is so is what means uh, a good creative content for humor unfortunately it is the negative element that always gets more attention and it is the social currency spent without thinking is what 
gives air to these kind of uh, you know content creators and then they become larger than life and these are the trends that are set up but where are these trends taking you no matter what everyone is entitled to respect Unfortunately, these kind of trends have given this false sense of understanding that respect is only to be earned. By default, you disrespect everyone and you know just say any mean thing and say any nonsense thing that comes to your mind. If with this kind of education and understanding the youth is progressing, we know where we are going ahead. So this is another big uh, you know, factor that we must understand. The power lies in your hand to spend your social currency extremely wisely. Also remember that anything that goes on internet stays there forever. It may be a sensation for a short period, but the content is not going anywhere. So your today's entertainment should not cost you tomorrow's embarrassment. The third important aspect is the FOMO. I'm sure all of you know the full form, which is fear of missing out. The way this entire platform is designed and the amount of information that comes over here, if you don't immediately pay attention, it's lost. So for example, right now that I'm taking this particular, uh, you know, I'm conducting this program over here and on my Twitter, there is some tweet that has come. Now, if I don't see it right away or if I happen to click, but I don't read it or or if I don't uh, reply to it, by the time later when I go back to it, it's lost because there will be 25, 30 more tweets. Or maybe, I mean, depending on how many have you subscribed to, there could be 100, 200 more tweets as well. And not just tweets, it's, it's everywhere. So that is one aspect which makes you, instead of responding, react. Immediately, you have to you know, pay attention to it and either like, share or something. Or, or, or either ignore, but it requires your immediate attention. What it does is it does not allow you time to think, time to validate, time to analyze. Also, the, another aspect of FOMO is that since we are spending so much more time on these social spaces, the information that comes from there is the information which we gauge our knowledge on, which we gauge that, hey, how come you don't know this? You know, like I still remember I had been to uh, one of our social gatherings with my friends. And at that point of time, Game of Thrones was something which was really trending and everybody was talking about GOT, GOT, GOT. And then one of my friends said, okay, you don't know GOT? And I'm like, no, I haven't seen it. This is what happens. And, and then, then now since I'm from this field and I know how to balance this, but you imagine in your peer circle, when you are sitting with everyone and everyone is talking of that one topic, a lot of youth gets completely caught up and feels miserable that, oh my God, you know, I'd, how come I don't know? So that is also that fear that drives them to constantly be updated what's happening, what's happening over here so that I don't feel left out, I don't feel outcasted. Remember one thing, it's only and only you who must choose what you want to be part of and what you don't want to be part of. It's your circle that influences your thought process. And of course, your thought leads to ideas and actions and actions again lead to more thought. And it's a, it's a vicious circle or it's, it's an actually a good cyclic uh, process. So being very, very mindful of who are you associating with is going to help you tackle this FOMO. Also understand that since everything on internet is permanent and not everything requires your immediate attention or your reaction. If you remember these two things, the mantra over here is to practice the pause. The moment you see something, because the information that comes on this medium is very emotionally triggering. It's not very action oriented, but it's, it's, it triggers emotions. If you see something, so, so let me give you a very simple example. Um, let's say you are in the middle of finishing your assignments 
and on your screen pops up your friend's picture who is, has shared you know a party picture and last night they were having party and while you were up all night filling up for submissions and all the first thought that comes to your mind is that oh my god her or he or she is having a rocking life where look at me i'm slogging over here what it does is it puts you under that pressure also what it does is that it actually very slowly and subtly sinks in the envy and this envy can lead to a lot of trouble ahead the fourth and you know like what i said the the stressor that comes from is competition and compulsion which is where envy sinks in everyone is today being so indirectly or sometimes even directly under the pressure of creating a content you know for example uh, where now very recently there was a festival ganesh festival okay if you have not put up a post regarding it does it mean you are not celebrating it i've, I've just shared an example of republic day you know i actually did a small little survey whatever my contacts and i saw that approximately 136 people had put up uh, whatsapp stories on the status what that's what we call on whatsapp the status messages about republic day i just randomly happened to ask 30 odd people that could you explain to me because i'm not really well educated on this and i uh, why do we celebrate republic day what does it signify you trust me only two of them knew so this is a very simple example it's not to judge people it is only and only to make them realize that you're blindly following or entering a rat race or compulsively you have to post it to be part of it but this is without knowing where will this kind of shallow approach take you it's how we call it that you know when we are following masses sometimes m is silent and this is what we end up becoming so it's the it's the nature of this platform which has now become so significant in our day to day interactions that if you don't put up something which is relevant to the current trend or the current festival you start feeling that okay my life is so dry i don't have anything to put up and you know there is no uh, event happening or i'm not participating etc etc think about it that just because you don't put it online or or if if some areas of your life if you choose to keep private it's nothing wrong so if you understand these stressors and these stressors are going to work completely differently for every single individual i cannot really tell you that all of us are going through this it's not necessary some of us may be impacted some of us may not be impacted it's on to us to know that which of this is stressing me out but these are the four most common and the underlying stressors when we enter the social media space what does it do to us the way it is designed of course it is designed to be addictive it is see nothing in this world comes for free neither is birth free nor is death free so anything in between is certainly not free by now we all know that what we are spending in the social space is our data that's what we are paying and it's not just data it's also much more and because of which this is where we land up that you know it's it's designed to be so addictive that i have not seen anyone who says 5 minutes means 5 minutes mein phone ban karke rakh diya it is always like acha two more minutes five more minutes and without you realize you just mindlessly scrolling what it lands up sleep deprivation sleep and food are the two very very important pillars of your physical and mental health any kind of deprivation or imbalance whether it is in sleep or whether it is in food is going to have impact on various other aspects of your life so compromising your sleep for a for a medium where the information is permanent it's not going anywhere do not prioritize it over your sleep second what it does to you is it makes you very impulsive like i said that you know there is a fomo constantly that if i do not react now it's lost it does not allow you the time to think 
and you know actually grasp that information evaluate understand that does it uh, work well with me do i agree to this do i need to know something more about this but we react impulsively and unfortunately once the words go out taking them back is very difficult you have a lot of lot of children come and argue with me but ma'am there is an option to delete for all and i'm like of course there is an option but if it is read by someone before you delete if it is screenshotted by someone before you delete there are a lot of these options so you really never know it's best to be safe than sorry as i mentioned it makes you very reactive and it also makes you envious all the time and it this envy not only disconnects you from you know having good healthy relationships with people around you but it also keeps you unhappy you're all the time envious about someone so there's a constant comparison with someone very unknowingly in many cases of course knowingly but in many cases very very unknowingly which is what becomes the source of unhappiness if you're not happy with your own self you're never going to be happy with anything else be it ice cream be it an iphone be it netflix anything nothing else is going to give you that happiness unless and until you are content with your own self so be mindful that is any of this factor prevailing within you let's move on to the dangers uh like you know many of you all pointed out in the chat itself that yes we have to be aware of the addiction about the fake information about the permanency of the data over here and a major chunk about the cyber crimes so let's look at them uh before i come to the slide let me let me talk a little bit more about this in the last 2 years alone i have worked with more than you know like 40 50 young people uh children and young adults both who have very consciously walked into my clinic saying that hey look i need help with managing my screen time and it was such a wonderful feeling that if if you know uh, the moment you acknowledge that there is a problem half problem is gone if this whole platform is designed to make you addictive do not forget that it's a man made platform we definitely are far more superior in order to manage this it's on to us that how much do we actually let it take over you know when initially internet came in that was about 98 97 98 1997 1998 1998 when internet came in, we were consuming it we were very actively deciding ki ha you know this is the plan i want this is the uh, x number of times only because it time those times it was a dial up connection it was not like this 24/7 and there used to be huge bills slowly and gradually now it has reached to a point where it has started consuming us and this this role reversal is what is creating major issues also because this platform is giving us the freedom and the anonymity it has also given rise to a lot of you know uh, people with ill intent who end up becoming cyber criminals and prey on to people who are far more vulnerable so now let's look at what are the factors that make you fall prey to various challenges or discomforts and, or or oh, unpleasant experiences online so these are the four uh, very significantly distinctive factors about the cyberspace i have someone raising the hand uh, please go ahead unmute yourself and ask your question oh, i i'm sorry uh, see my screen is shared so i really cannot see you there is okuro stephen who's raised hand Do you want to ask us something? Then please unmute yourself and go ahead. Else, wait till I finish, and then in the end, let's have a conversation. Uh, ma'am, I think uh, the uh, the those who are raising their hand, we will allow them uh, in the last five minutes, so that the yes. section session will not break in between. 
Okay, no problem. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And in case if you feel that, you know, y'all are going to forget your questions, because that's what, you know, social media has done. It has impacted our ability to uh, hold things in our memory. Put it down on the chat so you don't forget it. So, uh, yes, where was I? Uh, what are the factors that are very distinctive about the cyberspace? Understanding these factors uh, not only is going to help you benefit your own selves, as in keep your personal safety, but also in various aspects of the work area as well. Whether you choose marketing, whether you choose uh, forensics, whether you choose psychology. Uh, today, digital medium is a significant medium in every single field, from medicine to engineering, all the fields cover and understanding the psychology of this particular cyberspace is what is going to uh, help you. So let's look at each one of this at length. Online disinhibition effect. This term was coined by Professor John Suler, who we regard as the father of cyber psychology. What he means by a disinhibition effect is an effect which makes you believe or act in a different way due to the lack of restraints, lack of boundaries, lack of frameworks. See, the humans are social animals. We, we need conformity. We need to belong. We need to behave like someone. Uh, it, it's more like uh, you know, a social norm that we need. And that's how in our real world, we have, uh, you know, a framework as in a score of conduct defined that this is how you behave at home, this is how you behave at your workplace, this is how you behave at your college, university. And when it comes to cyberspace, it's a very open space. Here there are no distinctions whether you're a student, you're a professor, you're a dean, uh, you're a business tycoon, whoever you are, we all are at the same level. So it does not have a specific framework it does not have a well-defined code of conduct that has been explained and taught. And because of this disinhibition effect, how it impacts us is it either makes us benign or toxic. What does benign disinhibition effect means? What it means is that we end up over-trusting and drop our guards of you know, being cautious. Since we are interacting with the screen, we're not looking at the person over there. So we miss out on the important cues that are part of any communication. Human mind is wired to understand a communication in its totality when at least three of our senses are triggered. So in an in-person conversation, you have your you know, vision playing a role. You're gauging the body language. That is one cue. You, you hear the sound. Auditory cue is there. The proximity the smell, you know, these kind of cues are visible. The, the tone of that person, all these cues are missing when it comes to, uh, you know, online interaction. And because these cues are missing, we very easily tend to drop our guards of being cautious and we end up over trusting and being very friendly. Very simple example. Just say, let's say you're walking on the road and someone taps from behind and say, hey, hi, you're really beautiful. Can we be friends? Are you going to turn around and say, hi, I'm so and so and thank you. And you just start getting pally and, and within no time you share your entire life story with them? Of course not, right? But unfortunately, in cyberspace, many of us are doing that. And it is this benign disinhibition effect which can make us vulnerable by oversharing information, over trusting. We can fall prey to different types of cyberbullying, <laughs> such as doxing. That is one where you know someone befriends you, takes your very sensitive personal information from you and shares it or makes it public to actually defame you and harass you. The other side of the disinhibition effect is making you toxic. Uh, so. Trolling is a classic example of toxic disinhibition effect. While the social media space or, or the entire internet space gives us the freedom to express our thoughts, to express our ideas, to share our views, what it fails to do is to inculcate values or terms of responsibility that comes with us. 
it's also the screen effect, like I said, that you're not looking at the person. So your reactions are becoming much more toxic and much more uh, harsh. When I was doing MTV Troll Police, I worked with around about 15 to 16 of those trolls. All of them, except for one guy, these all were, you know, doing this without understanding that what they are doing is actually called as trolling and how it is impacting the celebrity. They all did it for time pass without knowing that how and when their comments became so toxic. It was a screen effect. I have personally met each one of them, uh, sat with them, counseled them, and spent so much time. They all come from families like yours and mine. It was only and only because, you know, they were sitting in the comforts of their houses, their hostels, in a cozy room at, uh, you know, specifically at night hours, nothing else to do, looking for some entertainment, got onto a celebrity's page, saw a picture, nahi maza aya, started writing. And within no time, it's the toxicity that comes out because you're not seeing the other person. Let's say if you're upset with someone else, in person when you're shouting at them, the moment you see them break down, the moment you see them crying or being uncomfortable, your anger subsides. But unfortunately online, you're not able to see the other person. So your anger, your discomfort, your negativity does not subside. It just gets more and more toxic and hence, Internet is not the place where you neither you went out nor you take vengeance. And this is all because of the online disinhibition effect. Moving on to the second uh, important aspect of cyber cyberspace, which is that this medium is very, very perceptive. What it does is it allows you to interpret the information the way you perceive it. Simple example, right now, if my phone rings, since I am in the middle of this uh, particular event, I'm going to put an auto message which says, sorry, I can't talk now. Now, the person who has received this message has neither heard me nor saw me, doesn't know what I'm doing. He or she is going to perceive that message basis their frame of mind. If he or she is in a positive frame of mind, may believe that, okay, fine, she's busy, she'll call back later. If not in a positive frame of mind, it, and I have, I have actually got these reactions that, oh my God, she has an attitude. I mean, there's no hi, hello, nothing, straight away a message that, sorry, I can't talk now. The point here is, has it got anything to do with me? No. It is their state of mind, their emotions, which make them perceive the content in a certain manner. Status messages, stories, classic example. Every person who looks at the status message somewhere believes, you know, that, that kind of perception. And, and trust me, I've got a few relationship cases which have been triggered by these WhatsApp statuses and Instagram stories. So the point here is we need to understand whenever you are going to react to a certain information that you see on in in you know digital format because this is text it's not talk you have to understand and change the perspective before you actually react to it something that is triggering an emotion on you is purely basis your emotional framework and not on what they are going through or what they have meant to, you know, people putting up shiries online, not necessarily they are having a heartbreak or something. That's a very common example that you will see everywhere. Or people putting up stories uh, which talk about relationships and traumas and all, not necessarily that they're going through it, but very likely. That's also another aspect of this medium that since it's very emotional space, a lot of us went out in this manner. So be mindful that how are you perceiving that information? The third element which we must understand is the sensory dimension. That you know, every, every communication for us to interpret, it has to trigger certain senses, but in the cyberspace, how is it triggering 
and when is it triggering is very very different than an interaction in a personal space most of the content in the cyberspace is a multimedia content you know it has sound it has motion it has life like virtual images of course it is extremely emotionally triggering but what it is doing is it is having an extreme trigger it does not allow us to have a balanced uh, you know uh, stimulation it's it's like you you look at any trending uh, game for example all of them are violent games any trending series movies most of them have violence sex drugs all of this and because of that the way our senses are being triggered it makes you far more uh, like there are a lot of studies will say that you know it is desensitizing you it is making you emotionally extreme reactive so for example if you are upset you may end up you know either withdrawing yourself like hey just forget it and walk away or maybe give back uh, in a harsh tone and walk away but today these reactions have become extremely um what do you say very very extreme in nature if someone has upset me some you know and we see online cyber bullying you will see so many such instances specifically on game chat rooms dating chat rooms etc immediately people go to the extreme step of giving them a threat or uh, extorting or you know saying extremely nasty things so that's how it is you know uh having a very extreme trigger again this will vary from person to person so knowing yourself is the key and the fourth important dimension of the cyberspace is the temporal dimension the use and experience of time in the cyberspace is completely different uh, i don't know how many of you all really know that why uh, or or how the human body understands time how how this whole phenomena of moon and sun has impacted us and that's that's how we understand if you if you look at it uh, why we say that you know you rise with the sun and you settle with when the moon rises that's how even the body is programmed or wired during the sun time uh, we are much more charged much more physically active mentally active and as the moon rises we calm down we settle down and these are the times where people are more emotional or they are more in touch with their emotional state of mind or so now since we understand obviously so there's a very common saying that you know midnight talks or late night talks are the talks that you have with your best friends where you open up and you share a lot of things so this is how human body is you know programmed and made up to act according to the nature's time now when we enter a space which challenges this completely in cyberspace there is no day there is no night it's 24 hours the same flat time and it is completely confusing us plus what it is trying to do is now see these these all dimensions which we understand are very different in terms of cyberspace uh, are also being exploited by the cyber criminals so for example uh you know communication let's say in cyberspace generally in our regular communication it's a very synchronous communication as in both of us are present at that point of time available to talk and we are talking and having a conversation but in cyberspace there is also an asynchronous communication where you leave a message and then the person will read and then respond and all of this in between since we're not used to it a lot of things change a lot of things uh, are perceived differently based on the emotions it has triggered you started a very positive conversation with your friend let's say and uh, it being an asynchronous conversation or a communication where you left a message but the person's not available right away uh, to see it or maybe they saw and those blue tick came but they did not respond or something and between the time they respond and you know what what events have happened with you or what frame of mind you are now into your entire outlook to it will change that's how it 
you know, impacts us. And like I mentioned that all of these are being also studied by the cyber criminals to take advantage. Most of the, you know, grooming cases, stalking cases, all of these perpetrators, uh, they actually victimize people during the moon hours. Because at that point of time, human mind is also very, very, uh, what we can call it as less cognitive and more emotional. And during those times, a lot of us do fall prey to this. These days, unfortunately, what we are seeing the trend is, you know, like uh, I was just speaking to one of our interns at the cyber bar, and he was like, you know, most of the complaints, he, even he was drawing a statistic, he told me, ma'am, most of the complaints we have got are between 12 and 2. And I'm like, what is youth doing at that point of time? Are we not supposed to sleep? Are you guys not studying? This is what this place has done to you. And now you imagine at that point when you are in the cyberspace, you're against the body clock. You are absolutely vulnerable emotionally and you're bound to get exploited by the cyber criminals. Not only that in, in uh, you know, by falling victims, you can also end up yourselves becoming bullies because of the extremity. So these four important aspects, each one of uh, y'all should know when you enter cyberspace. How does this whole thing impact your mental health, the entire social media? So, you know, very, in the very beginning, someone had said that how your decision-making ability is challenged. The factors that we saw, that if you're going to, you know, uh, decide basis someone's highlight reel, it's going to be a lopsided decision. Ironically, the name is social space, but what it actually does is it completely isolates you. You know, a lot of people today choose talking via screens or texting rather than talking in person. We're having so many memes and videos which talk about how going back to school, how going back to work is now going to be after two years of talking via the screens and in front of the screens. It also brings in a lot of uh, you know, isolation, loneliness. It constantly keeps you in the phase of instant gratification and instant gratification is going to make you lose the control over your impulse. It's like, I'm getting bored. I need someone to talk to, log on to internet. I'm getting bored. I want to watch a movie, log on to internet. I'm getting bored. I want to play a game, log on to internet. Patience, this virtue is actually diminishing. What it does is when internet is not working, then what you do, that's where impulse kicks in. And I've got so many cases where young teens and tweens have actually reacted so extremely with their parents where uh, you know they've not uh, uh, ensured that internet is working or the devices are charged and et cetera, et cetera. We have heard or read in paper, you know, rage over PUBG. This is what instant gratification can impact and this is what impulse control can lose, uh, can, uh, you know, lead to. Social anhedonia is one big element that impacts your mental health. What it means is that no longer enjoying those things which were enjoyous before. Now the threshold has gone up. Like I said, a simple comedy, a family comedy is no longer exciting or fun to the youth today until it reaches a level of roasting. This is what social India is. So you, you stop finding joy and pleasure in the simple things, in in things around you in which previously you could, but because of the threshold being pushed again and again and again, anhedonia sets in. And now you're looking for bigger challenges, bigger uh, things, which also eventually, you know, you lose interest in people and things around you. And in the search of new and bigger challenges is where you can fall into trouble. Of course, it impacts empathy. It is the desensitization that this entire medium does is what has led to so much of lack of empathy. People have forgotten that there are people on the other side and who can get hurt. 
you know we have become so insensitive to other people's need because there is always a competition to win there's always an aspect of you know stepping over someone and moving ahead for that instant uh you know instant entire highlight or you get instant fame that's where it is leading to and one of the major major uh, reasons in last couple of years that has surfaced which has impacted mental health is the body image obsession which comes from you know the pressure of being perfect having that perfect face which is ready for the selfies all the time or having a perfect body where you can you know learn to pose and take clicks and all of this a lot of slut shaming body shaming is what is being you know so rampant on the social media spaces now imagine 60% of your time where you spend if this is how it impacts you what is it going to be left of that 40% and how will you be able to manage your career your work your health in just that 40% which is impacted so badly so all said and done these are the important pointers that you take away from here that please understand the cyber effect and that understanding should be used also to give a benefit of doubt to some another person cyber crime is always an emotional assault first in some instances it has led to a physical assault as well in fact a very very recent that was on our independence day we oh, i'm sure you guys have must must have also read that how a young girl was stabbed by her stalker not one not twice but 20 times so in many cases cyber crime has led to physical assault but it is more of an emotional assault and do you know why our head or the mind is at the top of our body? Because that's where our control center is. If the CPU over here is having any kind of malfunction, it's going to impact the working of rest all organs. So emotional and mental assault, since they are invisible, they're very difficult to be identified as damaged and Unfortunately, because of the stigmas, people do not even think of fixing it. Everyone believes it's okay, I will handle, I will handle. And by the time they come to us professionals, we always have to tell them you should have come day before yesterday. Doesn't mean that nothing can be done, of course, but it's just that it makes the process longer. And Prevention is always easier than the investigation. Remember this. So last but not the least, remember that what you see is not necessarily the reality. Dikhave pe mat jao. Please apni akal lagao. So with this, I come to an end of my presentation. I have tried and highlighted every single way psychologically mentally emotionally you can get impacted by the cyberspace very specifically social media space for you to understand see the more we are aware more we are conscious about this the more we are cautious i'm not saying do not use of course now we cannot imagine our lives without social media it is a wonderful platform very powerful if you use it for a good and a positive purpose a meaningful purpose so identify how it impacts you and then draw out a strict screen time for yourself the medium is not going anywhere if you miss out something today you can go back to it and see it tomorrow i missed out watching game of thrones back then it's still available it's not going anywhere simple example so thank you so much. These are the coordinates for any further information you can write and follow. And wish you guys all the best. I'll be more than happy to take questions now. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, I must say the session was really interesting because 
uh, there are lots of information which is actually being very important nowadays, specifically when we are talking about mental health issues. I mean, people are so much into this social media and uh, their hype of social medias and people are actually uh, too much into it that it started hampering their mental health as well as their the way they behave like the fake personality they are started showing mm -hmm. and uh, it was indeed the every bit of the lecture was too interesting for me and of course for the participants as well mm -hmm. uh, ma'am uh, yeah. we have questions we have so many questions yeah. uh, and uh, i think i'm ready to take some questions also i request uh, those who want to ask anything to ma'am they can raise your hand i'll allow them to take the session uh, ma'am uh, the uh, the questions are uh, there is a question from prasanta okay. uh, i have read in uh, i have read in an article that from research it is found that the asians are more most vulnerable to cyber crime as they are willingly sharing their personal information photos videos geolocation status in social media publicly are we most vulnerable in cyberspace uh, so thank you so much for asking this questions uh, this question very specifically uh, yes unfortunately yes I won't even talk about Asians. Let me talk about very specifically India and why. It's not, see, cybercrime is a global phenomenon and it's a global, uh, you know, area where each one of us is struggling. However, why specifically we are more vulnerable is from two aspects. Firstly, uh, India as a culture or Indian culture very specifically is a very, very, open culture, very welcoming culture, a culture of trusting people, culture of uh, talking to people, making connections and all of this. Compared to Western cultures, this is more prevalent in Asian countries. And because of this, when we are also entering cyberspace, we are much more uh, trusting over there. Like I said, that it's not just the disinhibition effect, it is also because of the way we are. That is one reason. The second reason is the way we Indians have been, you know, uh, at some point actually pushed into using the cyberspace without being educated. In Western countries, the internet and education related to internet came way earlier than uh, when it started in India. And for the school, you know, for any developing nation, it's always about being there and uh, getting hand of it very soon, very soon. You know, there's always a kind of mindset, which is like, I want to do it. It's you take about students, every student aspires today to go out and to study and do something with the same thing is with when we enter the cyberspace. When though we entered late, we were in a hurry to become part of it without having appropriate knowledge, information, awareness, all of this. So these are some factors which are making us absolutely vulnerable, comparatively a little more than the other countries Primarily, it's because of the awareness uh, level and, of course, because of this whole, uh, you know, cultural difference that how we are as people. Uh, you must have seen very, very often, you know, when we travel in uh, locals or we travel in Erfur, how, how easily we are comfortable to talking with others. But when you travel to Western countries, you don't find it that often. In Indian airlines, you will see every people, everybody else in five, 10 minutes are talking to their neighbors. But right. in countries, this is not the culture. So that's also one of the big reasons. But the bigger one is lack of. So I'm not saying let's change ourselves because that what makes us unique as you know a culture and a country which is more accepting and uh, inclusive. But at the same time, the cyber world is a global world. So we need to be educated. We need to be aware that there are different ways to behave in this world. We can't just exactly take what we are doing in the physical world upon there. That's what makes us far more vulnerable. So I hope this answers your question. Uh, uh, very, very rightly said, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, if you allow me, even I have two questions uh, to uh, just clear my doubt for it. Uh, 
So what I'll do, Kritika, I will mm -hmm. you pick up a few questions mm -hmm. from uh, the chat, which you feel mm -hmm. are unique, so that because I'm sure many of the questions would be repetitive. Repetitive, right? Uh, Ma'am, okay, there are uh, actually not much questions now. So, uh, so there is one question because when you were telling me about so many things in the lecture, mm -hmm. so. That's a very instant question in my mind. So I really wanted to clear this. Okay, so uh, my question is, ma'am, uh, I hope uh, you know that currently uh, everyone is too much trending on these reels concept. Right. I mean, every second person. And uh, I was very uh, shocked some of the time when I see the students who are like, even not 12th pass when they are like famous they are very famous in this Instagram and all these. They have a lot of followers and then just because they show a little of any trending reel and just they are famous enough so uh isn't it now this particular like being in the trend is uh, one of a very uh problematic stage for the growing minds because i think uh, for me i still remember there was a time when i used to give around two to three hours just by scrolling reels i mean continuously but uh I, I mean, how psychologically it's been very difficult for us to move on for that stage, even knowing every uh, cons of all these parts. Still, I couldn't be able to resist. I used to keep on scrolling it and doing all these stuff, which is absolutely a waste of time. So, uh, ma'am, what do you want to say on this part? Thanks, Kritika, for saying it and uh, so upfront. I think this is everyone's story. So, uh you know like i said that we humans are social animals we want to belong somewhere we want to conform to something and anything that's new and trending very specifically at the younger age you know uh, which is what we call it as peer influence you want to be included and all of this this all drives uh, not only the young even the older people to join into this as you mentioned that you know it is it is something that absorbs you so let's understand that the most, the most uh, heavy or the, or the thing that adds up to a lot of load on human mind is the decision making, is the concentration, is you know, uh, working towards your aim and also the escape from all of this is mindless entertainment which is what these reels and all they provide. If you, right. if you actually, you know, very consciously think, maybe the first one. Absolutely. And, and maybe after scrolling 20, so this is the, you know, theory by uh, Pablo, which we call it as reinforcement theory. This is the principle on which all this social media content is built up that uh, every every time you see something you like good you continue doing that exercise still again you come to that particular you know another such video or content which makes you feel good and that's how you continuously go on into it see being popular being famous being uh, you know uh, significant or known or something is everyone's aspiration and internet has given this kind of tool that a lot of people can aim for it reality shows are a big example of this kisko nahi aana hai screen pe kisko bada nahi banna hai kisko celebrities ke sath photos nahi chahiye and it's because of this indian mindset we indians are following these kind of trends and rat races far more rigorously at the cost of mental peace relationships work career, family, everything. So that's how, you know, the, the yeah, an example, a very recent one is that young child, Uska, that Ghana became so popular, the song, I don't recall. Yes, 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 that's Bachpan Kapyaar and all. Uh -huh. Correct. So, so of course the platform is giving good opportunity to the talent, but it is also creating that unrest in people who do not have the talent and who still aspire. So that's the gap which people want to fill up. And hence, you know, people create rubbish reels also. There's no filter online, can a reel publish nahi hoga ya ye reel publish hoga. In the reality show, there are judges who decide that you talent, hai, aap aao. but online nahi hai. so you will have this 
So the best yes. way to deal with it is that, you know, put yourself, give yourself a time limit and stick to it. You know, all phones today have those uh, apps which help you decide how much time you want to spend before it consumes you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there is a very interesting question in the chat that uh, parents are going against the policies of social media mm -hmm. and making the accounts of minors on social media. It will be have a devastating impact. How much you agree? I mean, Vikas Rajdan wants to ask this question. Well, thank you, Vikas, for asking. And it is a fact that a lot of parents are doing it uh, without understanding that a virtual image of your child that you're creating could not always, but could have a pressurous impact on the child that is, you know, growing up. Uh, so I had a, uh, I had a client who was in the middle of changing jobs, a uh, young guy, I think 26, 27. And uh, in his previous company for a send off, they created a wall for him with all his memories. So what they did was from his social media, they dug out all the funny, funny, trivial uh, pictures, content and all. So it also had pictures of him when he was hardly a few months old baby, Nangupungu in the bathtub. And then uh, another picture where he was dressed in a fancy dress like a Cinderella and, and then many more such. While they were in the party, they had fun, they laughed and all. But today we all know that, you know, our, our memories and moments don't just stay with us. They all go on social media. So, of course, those party pictures were also put up on social media with the comments and with all of this. Now what happened was after a week when he joined his new company, there was a welcome wall with the pictures from this party and, you know, so with those all comments and all of them. The intention of people who put it was not to intimidate him, but the effect was intimidating. Because what he felt was that, you know, now people already over there knew about so many trivial things. When you go at a new place, you want to set in your own impression. You want, and it's a workplace. You want people to look at you as someone who's smart, intelligent, but here there is a preset already that, okay, you know, this guy's nickname was Papu and, uh, you know, uh, they had written all funny comments for him, this and that. It impacted him so much. He did not continue. Within three days, he left the job and he started for started counseling because he, he started feeling that everywhere that I'm going, I feel people are looking at me and laughing. So this is one simple example that what your yesterday's fun can impact your tomorrow's future as well. Very specifically for parents that, uh, you know, and I think you must also all go and talk to them that do not share any such pictures which are going to impact, which may prove embarrassing later on. So uh, yes, and not only that, also, please refrain from putting close-up pictures, full pictures, because these can be used for ill purposes such as morphing and then bullying, etc. So it's a big no for anyone. Just because children cannot give you their consent does not entitle a parent to put up. I'm, I completely understand that the parent's intent is not to actually you know malign the child but it can lead to it so it's not a great idea you want uh, also a lot of parents have come across who say that you know i'm i'm creating an account for example you know if they want facebook slash that name because we will have common names and people will have similar accounts and all you want to create an account and keep keep but you don't have to be posting over there and learn to enjoy those moments, not for taking pictures, but actually enjoying. I hope this answers your question. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And I think uh, it's a very interesting question as well as uh, it is a uh, very uh, nicely justified by your words also i would like to mention there is a one hand which was raised for a longer period of time bhagyashri bhagyashri you can unmute and ask your question and ma'am this is the last the question we are going to take sure 
Yes, Bhagyashree. Uh, very good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, actually, I have a question like, uh, like I, I heard from like uh, any country, they have uh, given like limited time space for children's like they are like uh, having specific time like one hour, two hours, two hours mm -hmm. to be spent on the social media. So do we uh, do you feel that, uh, that we, we have the same uh, uh, like any uh, what can I say same rule or law that can like that will show us like to use that um, screen for two hours or three hours like specifically related to your our uh, social media accounts. Correct. So even Indian Psychiatric Association has come up with screen time guidelines for children and adults both. But remember, these are guidelines. What do guidelines mean? So, so is for other countries. The guidelines mean that this is a good practice. It's not a law. If you, if you indulge in more screen time, you're not, you're not breaking the law. What you're doing is you're risking yourself. So we also have guidelines which say that below two years, it should be zero screen time. Two to five or two to six, it is. It should not exceed more than one hour. Six to 12, it should be two to three hours. And then, you know, 12 or 13 and above. Ideal is three hours max, not more than that. Sometimes, now, specifically during the lockdown time, of course, we cannot follow these guidelines because your work is online, your schooling is online, your education, entertainment, everything is online. So your screen time is going to increase. However, what you can follow now is the type of screen time. So like I mentioned, that you know every phone or every device has an app today, either inbuilt or you can download, which gives you a complete breakup of your screen time. Identify how much of this is productive use, how much is for educational purpose, how much is for entertainment. And keep the checks and decide what is the percentage that you want to give to each one of them? In certain places, you can't compromise. If your school is for four hours, five hours, six hours online, you have to be on the screen for those many hours. However, in those cases, limit your entertainment time during the school days and, you know, uh, you know, you utilize them maybe over a weekend. But the thumb rule is not more, ideally, the guidelines is not more than three hours. Now, whenever time permits, we must go back to these guidelines and follow them. Hopefully, the COVID situation settles in our country and we have schools and colleges opening up is where we will be able to follow these guidelines far more uh, effectively. So I hope this addresses your question. Yeah, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And... Uh, I, I really appreciate the session was really interesting and even the uh, questions and answers were uh, too interesting for uh, for us to learn many things and uh, thank you so much ma'am for giving your valuable time to us and sharing the very important information to all the generation like it's it, it, this particular information is not restricted to the young generation but I think it is uh, open for all the generations Absolutely. and uh, we are extremely thankful for to you for giving your valuable time and embracing all the aspects of this topic to the participants. Now I request my co-host Ruchika to conclude this session with the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Nirali, ma'am, for uh, such an insightful and uh, thought-provoking session on the topic, which is of great importance in present time as uh, we are moving blindly on uh, following the trends. So thank you, ma'am. I have learned many new things which were completely unknown to me earlier. And definitely your suggestions and awareness point will bring out a permanent change in my behavior on social media. And I'm sure our participants have learned a lot from you. And this session will be really useful for them as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if any of you feels I have been unable to answer your question, you can write to uh, Kratika or you can directly email it to me and I'll be happy to help. I will, ma'am. Uh, as uh, uh, we are on this virtual <coughs> platform, 
So I would like to request uh, you on behalf of Dr. Ranjit Singh sir, Sherlock Institute of Forensic Science and Surakshit Bharat team to kindly accept our gratitude on the on form of this e-certificate of participation for delivering an outstanding cyber awareness talk on psychological implications of social media under Surakshit Bharat campaign for cyber crime awareness and reporting. We are grateful for your earnest contribution as a speaker in Surakshit Bharat campaign. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation, sharing your thoughts, sharing this insightful lecture on this session. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ruchika, uh, and thank you so much, Nirali, ma'am, once again for uh, uh, this wonderful Sunday, because uh, I think this Sunday is more interesting for us after after em embracing our mind with such intellectual talk. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Stay aware, stay safe. Thank you, ma'am. Goodbye. Uh, with this... Uh... Uh, for more updates on Surakshit Bharat campaign or any other expert talk on uh, that we have, we are going to have, uh, you can follow us for more updates uh, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and you can watch out all the session recording on our YouTube channel, Forensic Three Sixty Five. After that, the next uh, concern is how to download certificate. That is the query that uh, mostly come from uh, participant. So I'm going to let you know in few easy steps. In first step, you have to type your uh, forensicevents.com on your Google search bar. And then you have to click on the download certificate icon on the left right, uh, upper right corner of the window. Now you have to uh, enter your registered email address on the search bar. And here the list of previously registered event certificate will be open. Now you have to uh, find your certificate from for the today's event. And here you go. You can download your certificate from here and save it your storage. Thank you.